Let me show you how to connect JotForm with GPT-4, which is the latest version of ChatGPT. For this, we're going to use Zapier in the automation. That way we can use it as an autoresponder for the forms or other automation sequences that we want to use. So follow me to my desktop right now. Welcome to JotForm, my name is George, and today I'm going to show you how to connect JotForm with GPT-4, which is the latest version of ChatGPT. The idea is to start automating our form submissions. That way, when someone submits a form, we can auto-respond using the AI of GPT-4, which makes things interesting. Now, to get started, we're going to jump into Zapier. This is going to be our automation platform, the connection between JotForm and GPT-4. Now, to get started, let's create a new Zap. In this app, we're going to need a trigger. So the trigger is the first thing that needs to happen in order to trigger the next step. Okay. And for the trigger, we're going to need a job form submission. So we're going to connect job form. Let's go ahead and select an event, new submission. That's what's going to trigger this. Let's go ahead and continue. And we're going to choose an account. If you have previously connected with job form, you're going to see your account here. If not connect a new account. Now be aware, I am logged in into JotForm. That's why I'm not getting asked to log in. But if not, you have to log in here. Yes, continue to JotForm. We're going to allow. All right, we are now connected. Now let's go ahead and continue the form. Now in this case, we're gonna use the form that we previously used. For, ex for example, this case, I'll use this one, website speed optimization form. Be aware that the form that we're viewing there is the forms that we have available. If you want to create a new form for this automation, do so first so you can see it. If not, you can just go ahead and refresh it and select the form. Let's go ahead and continue. And right now it's going to test the trigger. So it's gonna grab the data from a submission. Now in this case, as you can see, we have the sample data text box here for company name, website, website platform, CMS. These are elements that we have on our form. Let me show you. Let's go into edit form. And these are the elements. You can see there, company name, website, platform, CMS, etc. We're viewing it here. Okay, let's go ahead and continue. Okay, and now we have the trigger ready. So when anyone submits that form, it's going to trigger this automation. Now, like we said, we want to connect with GPT-4 from ChatGPT. So let's select ChatGPT. Here it is. For now, it's in beta, but it's working. Okay. And let's choose the event, a conversation. Let's continue. And we're going to connect to a new account. So for example, if you haven't connected previously, do so now. So for example, connect an account. Okay, and it's gonna ask us for the API key. So in this case, I'll click view API keys. And again, if you are not logged in into OpenAI's chat GPT, you'll do so first and then grab the key. So you can create a new secret key and we're gonna use that one, okay? So once we have the key, we add the key here, okay? In this case, I've already connected one, so I'll go ahead and continue. And now we now we have the action, okay? So the user message, it's what we want to reply to. So for example, we have this form as an example, and we're gonna grab this one, the other details, and that's what we want to use the GPT power to respond to this one, okay? So let's go ahead and user message, we're gonna, find it here in the form fields. So you can see here, we should find it other details. Okay. So remember other details, there we go. So it's going to grab that data to respond. Okay. And now we have the model. Now by default, GPT 3.5 turbo is the one selected, but be aware that if you are signed up for GPT four and you have access, you can change the model here. So in this case is GPT-4 and we can view the models here. So for example, if we want to use the latest models, we have GPT-4, GPT-40314 with this max amount of tokens. Now, if you have access to the 30, 32K tokens, you can use this prompt also, okay? But in this case, we're going to switch it up to GPT-4. You can use GPT-3.5 if you like, but in this case, we are working with the latest one, which is GPT-4, okay? So I've changed the model to GPT-4. Now we have access to change the temperature and we're gonna keep it as it is, but we can tweak that if we like. Now, this is the assistant instructions, okay? This is where we're going to tell chat GPT what we want to do with it, okay? So for example, we want it to help us respond to our form. So let's go ahead and add the prompt here. 
Okay, this is just a quick example. Help me respond to this suggestion message as professionally as possible, okay? So that's what we're telling it. So this is the message that we're going to receive. So when anyone, anyone submits the form, and this is what GPT-4 is going to do. So it's gonna to respond to it professionally. Now we can change this up if we wanna have something like more fun, more entertaining, more engaging, uh, more professional, more friendly, etc. We can do so here, okay? The username, we're gonna keep it as it is. Assistant name, we're gonna name it, for example, in this case, we'll say jot form. Okay, be aware that if you have a company, it's recommended that you add your company here or your names. For example, for me, it would be like George Aguilar if I were if I was the one responding to these messages, okay? Memory key, we'll keep it as it is. Let's go ahead and continue. We're gonna test the action. Now be aware, it's gonna to respond to this, sample text area for now, okay? Here we go, we got the results for this. So you can see here, you can see, dear, thank you for taking your time to respond to your thoughts, suggestions with our team, etc. But again, it's just responding to this. If this had to do with something specifically with a situation, it would blend in that information and respond to it here using GPT-4, okay? So now let's go ahead and test this out, okay? So let's publish this app. We're gonna turn it on. Here we go, it's, not, it's now turned on. Here's the history. Okay, there's no runs as of now, but we are going to submit this form right now to test it out. So remember, this is the form that we're selecting. Let's go into publish, open in a new tab, and we'll just fill this out information randomly for now. And the important part is this one right here, the other details. So let me fill something out that it's gonna respond to. Okay, so I just wrote this quick message that says, I think you should work more in improving your auto detailing quality. I can still see marks on my car from scratches, okay? So this is just a random message, I'm gonna submit it, okay? So now this is being triggered by Zapier. ChatGPT, GPT-4 is receiving this message and generating the response for us. So again, let's check it out here in the history. Let's refresh it. Now we have our test ready, and here it is. We have our first SAP history, which is this one with GPT-4. Let's go check it out and see how it actually responds. So remember, this is the trigger that we received, and here's the action. The action is for GPT-4 to do its work and respond to the message. So here we go. Here's the system message, like what we're telling it, and the user message. Now, what results did we get? The data out. So in the data out, we have this message. Be aware that we have some variables here. We're gonna ask in the automation to not add variables, but this is the response. So thank you for providing feedback on our auto detailing service. See how it, it blended in the message that it received. And we sincerely apologize for any inconvenience caused by the presence of the marks on your vehicle after detailing. So see how it, responded in a professional manner to this message. Now, you see how easy that was? Now, what do we want to use this in an automation? So right now we connected it, okay? And we're gonna ask it to not add variables the next time. So let's go back into Zapier and we are going to edit this action, okay? So let's close this, let's open it up and we're gonna edit, here we go, in the action, we have the assistance instructions. So we're gonna add a point there and we're gonna say don't add and we're gonna say don't add variables to the message okay so now the assistant which is GPT-4 knows that we're not going to need any variables on this okay again we continue and we go ahead and publish this app go to publish and the next automation when we use this is gonna write again the response without that message but let's go ahead and edit this. Remember, the idea is to automate something. So once we have that going, what do we want to do with this? So we can click on the plus button and continue our automation. How do we want to connect this? Well, it depends. If you want to use Gmail, if you want to use SMTP, uh, webhooks, connect us to something else, we can do so. So for example, you want to send out an email using Gmail, that is possible with the response that we received from GPT-4. So the, the action is to send an email, and you continue to add the automation. Now that is how you are going to connect JotForm with GPT-4, which is the latest version of ChatGPT. We're gonna use Zapier for this, and you can see how easy it is using this automation. 
Well, I thank y'all for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that little bell notification to get notified when new videos come out. And that's a wrap.